Hey folks, just getting started here for a second. Let me make sure everything's moving. It looks like things are moving. That's good. Let me figure out how to get all the mice in the right place. Let's do that. Still have a little work to do to get a smooth setup. Oh, I can do this. There we go. Um, all right. And so now I can see that. I can see that. Hello world, it's working. Okay, I can see a chat theoretically. I'm gonna reopen that because it didn't look like it was happy. Pop out, there we go. Okay, cool. Uh, sweet, so, I just gotta move the right mouse. Um, what we're gonna do today is, we've got a little trick for something that I'm working on in work where um, in Amazon, you can, Amazon Web Services, AWS, you can um, use programmatic access keys to do things like have scripts talk to the Amazon services. Um, and one of the, uh, one of the tricks with that is you basically get a secret key and an access key, or the two keys that you use with it. So when you got those keys, you can make the communication calls. Um, for security reasons, we use MFA, multi-factor authentication. And so when you apply MFA to it, the programmatic access doesn't work because it will it needs the MFA token, which changes every 30 seconds, in addition to those two keys to kind of mush itself together and then get another set of credentials to, to use. So, <coughs> so what I'm gonna build is Something and so we've got a we've got a workflow process <coughs> in um, in software called Ultrix. Excuse me. Um, that you can put Python code in, and so part of Ultrix lets you use that secret key and that access key. But of course, that doesn't work for us because we have MFA enabled. So just out of the box, Ultrix won't work. So what I'm going to build is. A piece of Python code that we can put into Altrix um, in part of its workflow that will allow people to insert an MFA token that changes every 30 seconds when they run their workflows. It'll go out, it'll do what it needs to do to get its the, the MFA version of the credentials, and then it can actually go on and process the rest of the stuff and send um, send stuff to S3, send stuff to the databases, send stuff to you know wherever. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, it's gonna take me a little bit to kind of get set up here and, and bounce around with this. So you're gonna to have to bear with me because I'm this is I'm starting all this from scratch, kind of. I've done it a little bit before. Um, you can see this MFA token updater here. I've kind of already done this once, so I'm gonna be copying and pasting a bunch of code from my other things. Um, but I'm gonna start this from scratch and just kind of work it. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do is I've actually got, and I think I'm already logged in. Um, yeah, so. I've actually got an Amazon account set up now that I can use for uh, demonstration. So this isn't my personal account, this isn't my work account, this is a completely separate one that I set up just for purposes of demonstration. So I'm, I'm gonna do my best to not do anything stupid with it. Uh, and like the, the big reason I'm doing that is like, is basically security. So um, on the off chance that I accidentally flash credentials, you will have my sandbox account. You will not have my personal account or my work account. Um, those things are completely firewalled from this. Um, I'm gonna do my best not to flash credentials, but this it just it gives a, sep a separation there just in case something goes funky. Um, also, there's things like you can see the you can see the names of these S3 buckets. Like again, security through obscurity is not a good way to do stuff, but there's no reason for me to tell you the names of S3 buckets in my personal account or in my work account. That's just a piece of information that could help an attacker attack. Um, just having that piece of information is unlikely to, to be helpful, but it could be, so we want to prevent that as much as possible. But with this account, so what? Um, so that's where we're headed. Um, and the other thing is I'm going to have to actually, so I'm going to need to, the first thing I'm going to need to do is, so I'm in with my, um, in, in the Amazon Web Services, there's a top level root account and you're not really supposed to use the root account for anything other than making user accounts underneath it. Um, and so the account that I have here is, is my is my administrative user account. 
but I don't actually want to use it for this process because it has rights to all everything because it's an admin account. So I'm going to use it to make another uh, IAM account, um, another user account that only has access to a specific S3 bucket because um, I want to go through the process here. Um, it also helps me practice this type of uh, administration. I don't really do this stuff. We have a, uh, a, a very good team and the team that I work with has people that actually do the vast majority of this stuff. Um, I've only done it a very little, so it's also a little bit of practice for me. So you're gonna see me fumble a little bit on this as well. Um, so anyways, first thing we're gonna do is, uh, is just, and like, maybe I should have done this like, and had like an order of stuff and thought through this, but that's kind of not how I work. Um, oh yeah, so now you can see, by the way, um, my this is the account ID, right? So this is, this is leaking a little piece of information. Again, security through obscurity is not a good thing. So just hiding that account information isn't a good way to, to lock stuff down. Um, but I'm gonna do my best never to show, well, so I'm not gonna show you my personal one or my work one. Um, the Because those, there's no reason for me to leak that information. But again, on this account, it's fine. Um, and it's fine anyways, but it's just that one little extra bit of security. Um, and you can see here, yeah, so I'm using MFA on the accounts, on the root account, like, I've got as much security here, I need to rotate the keys because um, <laughs> I haven't used this account in a year and a half. Um, uh, as you'll see, so when we go to users, uh, that's when I created the keys. That's why I created the accounts was, you know, 426 days ago. Um, so anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a programmatic user here. I'm gonna create a user that I don't need to have, um, actually have uh, uh, web access um, or web, portal access. And so in the accounts, there's two, there's two types of access. So you can access, uh, I'll show you here in just a second. Um, so we're gonna call this green field. Um, demo one. So the two types of access that you can provide are programmatic access, which would be like your command line stuff or your Python scripts, et cetera, or the AWS management console, which is the actual web interface that you're looking at right here, right? Um, so this user, uh, demo CLI one. So this is just gonna be for command line interfaces. I don't wanna have, and again, this is another security thing. This account doesn't, is never going to need to use the web portal. So I'm just not going to provide access to it. Um, it's the, the kind of security uh, practice of least privilege. So you want to give as few privileges away as possible for the thing to do, whatever, like the, the, the account or the person or the whatever, to be able to do as much as possible. So you want to bring the privileges all the way down um, until, until it's the, at the, va the very minimum of what the, what the, whatever the thing is that's interacting, be it a, a person or a computer. Um, needs to do. So there we go, programmatic access. Uh, next we're gonna set up some permissions. So it's these are the groups that I've set up. Um, administrators, which is admin access. Force MFA is, uh, so none of these policies are, oh wait, these are groups. So there's roles, groups, policies, something else. Um, but if I turn on force MFA, yeah, so, okay, so this is the group of MFA. So I'm gonna put this user, attach existing policies directly. Oh yeah, so I can, I can do this. Uh, change permission type, yeah, it's fine. Um, so this isn't the best way to do it. I'm gonna just show you something real quick. All these policies here with the little yellow boxes are ones that Amazon has created that they've got really well defined. Um, like, so admin access, um, gives you, uh, if you, if you will get into some of this, uh, JSON in a little bit or at some other point, but like, this is basically saying, Hey, for everything that Amazon web services has allow every single action that's admin, that's full admin. That's, you've got the everything. Um, so that's a high one. We don't want to give that to this one. Um, but then the other one, so those, all the yellow box ones are Amazon created ones. Um, and then this one without a yellow box by it is one that I created, this force MFA. Um, and so this is, 
This is one that I put together um, a while ago. I don't know why it's not scrolling. It's not scrolling. There we go. Scroll windows inside of scroll windows. Windows, my favorite. Um, so this is a policy that I put together that will let that forces MFA, but lets people basically use their like assign their own MFA. Um, so it took a little banging around to do. Um, Amazon has not vetted this. <laughs> I, I should actually send it over to some of my Amazon contacts and get them to look at it and see if it's good. Um, I've posted about this, but whatever. But we're going to use this as the group. But so instead of attaching the policy directly, I'm going to assign this user to the force MFA group, which has that force MFA policy inside of it. Um, and that's the only policy it's in there. There's also this um, commander, which is another um, piece of software that you can use for kind of testing stuff uh, that is outside of the scope of this. It's a totally different thing. Um, but sort of tags. I'm not really using tags. This is just me doing this. So here's what we've got. We've got Greenfield demo, um, programmatic with access key, permission boundary is not set. I don't know what that means. Um, great user. Okay. So this is a programmatic thing. Um, and so what it does is right now it gives us this, um, uh, the, the two keys that come with programmatic access. So there's the access key, which is just visible. And there's going to be the secret key here, which I'm not going to show you because that's the one when you have those, both of those keys right now without MFA sitting on, actually MFA is actually on it. So I could actually show you this key and you still couldn't do anything with it because you'd have to force MFA through it. Except maybe you could set it up. I don't know. I'm not going to show you the key. Um, and like realistically, I wouldn't show you the access key, generally speaking. But again, this is a, a, a test account and whatever. So like, I'm okay with that. I'm just not going to show you both of the keys. So um, what's the best way for me to do this? Um, hmm. So I'm definitely going to do this. Uh, Oh shit. Uh, is there a way? Oh, I remember how to do it. So if I do this, y'all can't see the screen, but I have another screen over here that I can use. Uh, now the trick is I would have to do this probably a couple different times. Um, because I need to actually be able to use this key at some point. Um, and I don't have a good way yet to deal with that. Um, Greenfield demo CLI one secret dot text because I'm just storing it as a text file right now. Um, All right, bear with me. Greenfield demo CLI one access key. All right, so we're gonna, yeah, this is gonna take a little bouncing around to figure out how to actually kind of push all this stuff in. Um, let's hide that. Let's close that. Okay, we can bring this back alive. There we go. Uh, so now I have this thing and actually, oh, actually give me one second. Cause what I'm going to do is the smart thing and actually go ahead and put it in my password manager, which is where I need it. I don't know why I didn't do that a second ago. So new login. Sorry, bear with me one second. Because there's just a bunch of stuff. So access key goes in here. C 
secret key. Goes in here. Goes both passwords. Save that. Okay, so I've got those. That's good. That can stay there for now because I'm going to have to hit it programmatically. Okay, there we go. Now we can make progress, maybe. Um, oh, one more thing. Let me do that. Okay, cool. Um, all right, cool. So now, after all that, uh, we've got an account set up. Um, and so now the other thing that we need to do and the reason I need to do this is security credentials. I'm going to come here. Um, now, if I tried to use this access key and the secret key, oh yeah. So this this shows you the thing. Like you can't you can't get that secret key anymore. Like when it shows you that the first time, that's the only time you can get it because Amazon wants to make sure that it's as secure as possible. So it gives it to you once and only once. You can make another one if you needed to, like I create another one right now, it's super easy, and just make that one inactive. So that's how you deal with the security of it. But like one, once it's once it's gone from that screen and you've got it downloaded, it's gone. So that's good, that's a security thing. But I don't have to worry about flashing it anymore because I know that it's nowhere in this system. Um, the, uh, but so, uh, console password disabled. Yeah, so console password disabled means I can't use the web page with this thing. Um, and there's not actually a username and password. So if you tried to log, there is no, even though you know the username, uh, Greenfield Demo CLI1 or whatever it was, it, and you know this account number, so you've got two pieces of information. Actually, you, know, you have two pieces of information for my account here, because you know the the um, the account number and the, no, it's not actually the name. Is that the name? That might be the name, I can't remember. But yeah, so that's the, I think that's the account name too. It may be different. Um, but so that, that gives you two things that you have to need. You still need a password. And then also for me, you need MFA. So like, even if you get my password somehow, you'd still need the MFA, which means you need my phone, um, or you need to trick me for 30 seconds, um, or beat me over the head with a wrench. Um, and then I'll give you my phone. Um, so Cool, we've got this set up, but now what we need to do is actually set up the MFA. Um, and so multi-factor authentication. And so we're gonna assign MFA device. Um, and so we're gonna manage this. Uh, yep, virtual MFA, because that's what I got. And then I'm gonna hide this again. I just realized because I don't wanna show you the MFA code, because that would be silly. I'm actually really glad it was not showing right there. I, I could kill this and make another one, but um, let me get into my password manager and my, not my password manager, my MFA thing. So all I'm doing is, well, it's supposed to show me the QR code, but it's not showing me the QR code. What's going on? Uh, help. Oh, I guess, I don't know, whatever. Um, be right back. So we're gonna scan the QR code. Got it. Done, and now it's asking me to enter the MFA code a couple different times. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Uh, bump, bump, bump. And then that was the first time. Now we need to wait 30 seconds and we're gonna do it again. In fact, can I hide that? Yeah, so I can bring this back. So this is just how it's verifying that I actually got the code right. Um, so here's MFA code one, which you've had my username and my password 
and my account number, well, it still wouldn't work because you're these these aren't going to help you. Um, but this is how it just verifies that I got the uh, that I got the code right. Hey, successfully installed. Okay, so my MFA is on my phone. Cool. All right, we're set up. That was a lot of work, um, but that's what we need to do to get to get an account set up. So that's that's just the basic to, to get a command line account set up. Um, now what do we want to do? Um, so I'm going to make a new S3 bucket. No, I'm not. I've got another sandbox. There. Um, okay, so I'm going to go, and again, I'm kind of bouncing around here. I don't know exactly how I'm doing this stuff yet. And I haven't done a lot of it, or I haven't done it really before, ish. So you're gonna walk with me on this journey, basically. Um, so we're gonna go into, so I've got PyCharm, which a friend has recommended. And so we're gonna make a new project, AWS, MFA CLI uh, tool. Um, all this stuff looks good. We're using Python 3. We're going to create a virtual environment. Um, we're going to create a welcome script. Sure, why not? So this will take a second to set up. Well, it's going, if you want to play along at home, I have um, All I Want Is You by U2 uh, on single song repeat in, in my headphones, just as a background kind of thing going. Okay, cool, here we go, PyCharm. Um, now this is also gonna be me being new to PyCharm because um, I'm used to doing stuff on the command line and um, in Vim usually, so, uh, this is me getting kind of new to it. Um, so run should just give us a high pie charm. Okay. Yeah. So this is working, right? So it just defines a little method here with high pie charm or high name. And then it sends it the name pie charm. Okay, cool. Um, uh, whoops. Oh, weird. The hotkeys are different. I'm not on the Windows machine. No, what the heck's going on? Oh, the hotkeys are different. That's not cool. I'm trying, so, nah, I'm using a hotkey that should select all the way down, but it doesn't do that. That's a bummer. It's That's different than every other Mac app application that I know. Okay, whatever. Um, oh, so this, all right, folks, this is gonna be a little bit of a ride. Um, I know that what I want is the Amazon web tool or web tool. Um, the Amazon uh, package, I think is what we call it in Python, called Bodo3. Bodo3, I don't know how to, what it's actually called. Um, what's the command for run? Control R or whatever that one is R? Nope. Okay, good. Now I can, now I can hotkey it. Um, the, I don't know about you, but I never remember what the difference is between the little carrot and the whatever this thing is that looks like something from Star Wars. Um, the one that I use all the way on the outside. Okay, but so Bado 3 is not installed. Got it. Uh, now, I don't know how to install modules on PyCharm. Um, like, I've got a virtual environment here. Uh... External libraries, code, navigate. Can I just terminal? What is this? Oh, okay, so I'm in the virtual environment. Cool, okay, so now I should be able to do pip install bado3. You work for me? Oh yeah, look at that. 
So now if I run this command with nothing in it, it should still, or it should work now. Process finished, there you go. Um, and then just because, oh, world, because that's what we do. Hello world, there we go. So it's working, we've got the, we've got Bado installed. Um, the thing that I'm gonna have to look up, so Bado by default will look at um, a .aws directory and it'll it'll look for this config and this credential file, which I'm not gonna, actually I could open these because I've got them set up, they're encrypted in a way that you won't be able to see it. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that's bouncing around in there just because I knew that I was gonna be doing some of this stuff at some point and on the, on the off chance that I accidentally show you the thing, I wanna make sure you can't actually read it um, and it's encrypted, so uh, hooray. Um, yeah, encrypted credentials. Um, and so there's some back and forth over there or whatever. Um, you could get, like if you had this full directory, you'd be able to process it out, but I'm not gonna show you the whole thing. I'm not gonna show you any of it. Um, but anyways, the Bado3 looks at, at this config file and this credential file um, to get, to make connections. So um, let me just look. Actually, give me one second. I just wanna check one thing. Yeah, so occasionally I'm gonna do that. Um, so this is a little script that just, uh, that basically just reads an S3 file. Um, and so we'll just recreate it in PyCharm. So um, I could copy and paste it, but you know, actually, can I make it? That's what, uh, whatever, uh, we're just gonna copy and paste it for now. And we'll just talk through it. So, Bado3 has two different types of things. There's resources and there's something else that I can't remember the name of it. Um, one of them's a higher level one, one of them's a lower level thing. I can't remember which one's rich. Like, you will see code snippets back and forth that use either one. Um, sometimes you can use both. Sometimes you can only use the lower level one. Um, I don't think there's ever a chance when you're, or ever a thing where you can only use the higher level one. Um, so, but in order to basically interact with the body module, you create a resource or whatever the other thing is and, um, and give it a specific thing. So like, I'm going to be interacting with S3, like that's the goal here. And I just, for whatever reason, it was called S3R, S3 resource. Um, so, uh, and then what I've got is I want a bucket name of aws.pg, which is my playground, aws is me, dot playground, dot sandbox, which is our, um, that's this bucket right here. And the key is the quick brown fox, uh, which do I have that in there? Yeah, the quick brown fox dot text. So this is the file that I'm trying to hit. So we take the S3 resource and we grab an object from it with the bucket name and the key. So basically saying go grab aws.pg.sandbox, the quick brown fox. We're gonna move that into an object. And then with that, we just bounce through, we're gonna get it. And then we're gonna get the body of it because it's basically a bunch of JSON. And then we're gonna read that and then we're gonna decode it from UTF-8 and we're gonna ignore the errors that's gonna give us a string from the file and we're gonna print it. Here's the trick though, this ain't gonna work. And you can actually see the last part right there, access denied. Um, okay, now so what I need to do is figure out how to show you This is tricky because I need to I need to show you how I'm gonna do this. Why is that there, go away. Um, so, I 
All right. Actually, what we're going to do, I'm going to go back to IM for a second. I'm going to do this without MFA. Oh, actually, you know, right now it's not going to be able, so I don't have a policy on here that's, that allows, um, that allows that user to actually access anything. So Amazon, again, works off that principle of least privilege. So there's no policies attached to this at all. And the policies are what, what lets you do stuff. Yeah, get started with permissions. So there's no policies or permissions. I could give you this, this secret key and this access key and you couldn't do anything with it because there is no policy attached that would let you actually do anything. Um, and that's cool. But what we're going to do right now, so I just took it out of the force MFA group. So now what I can actually do is I can turn this off, I think. I would remove that. So what I want to do is actually get it set up without MFA um, just to make sure we can make the connection because um, that'll be the first step. Once we've got that working, then we can go through the thing of doing all the MFA stuff. I don't want to try and... I don't want to try and jump all the way to the end. Um, if I wasn't doing this on video, I might actually try that because I've kind of already got some stuff to, to do that, but I want to walk all the way through this process. And so we're going to start with just, with just the, the first little bit. Um, so what the, but one of the things I need to do is I'm going to give this access so, all right, bear with me one second. S3. Uh, I'm just looking down for a second. And so some of the, um, some of the stuff I have in my uh, my grimoire, my NV alt thing, has names of stuff that are work related. That again is not critical, but I'm just not going to show it. Um, Okay, but I can't find it. So we're gonna look it up. Um, so AWS permission S3 bucket. Setting up bucket object access, there we go. Amazon docs are really good. I'm just gonna scroll down, blocking public access. Okay, that's not what we want. We want I am, I am. Right, how to grant access to an S3 bucket. Cool. So list, get, put, delete, okay. So this is the JSON that we need to have. And so this is actually good for me too, because I'm making, this is, I'm, I'm doing this the more right way. Um, cause one of the things I could do right now is I could just go, whoops, why am I not user? Wait a second. Did I not delete him from that group? I didn't. I really thought I did. Permissions. Oh, I didn't put them in a group. Oh, I guess I didn't do that. There we go. So now, no, for some FA commander. I don't know. I thought I did that. I'm freaking out. Oh, I turned off the virtual MFA. Maybe that's what I did. Disabled. Okay. No. Remove. Remove. 
and he does not exist. Okay, something's bugged. Because it doesn't actually have refresh. There we go. It was just cached. Um, getting started with permissions, okay. So what I could do is, you can apply permissions directly to a user or you can apply permissions to a group and then assign the user to the group. You really shouldn't apply permissions directly is all the stuff that all the people that do this stuff have told me. Um, you should make a group and then add the group to it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do, we're gonna make a group and we're gonna call this um, S3 awspg.sandbox basic. Uh, let's just do read write. Read write. Um, naming conventions are one of the three hard, two hard things in computer science. Uh, does that work? That's gonna work for now. Okay, that's cool. And so now I'm going to attach the policy. I'm actually going to not attach any policies um, because I want to make a new policy, which I guess I should have done first. That's okay. So now we're going to make a policy and we're going to create a policy. This policy will be for S3. Actually, we can just go into JSON. So Here's the JSON we want. Um, that's just Amazon's version statement, version number. The statement is the, the block of stuff that we're doing. Um, we want to allow listing the buckets or listing the bucket. Um, and the bucket here is going to be AWS PG Sandbox, I believe. And then we also want to allow, and so that's just the root of the box or root of the S3 bucket. And then here we want to let put objects, get objects and delete objects from bucket name slash star, star being everything underneath it. Um, and so this policy So this is going to be S3. I kind of like to name things the same. AWS, PG, Sandbox, read, write. Allows read, write to AWS, PG, Sandbox. It's not going to like that slash, I think. Yeah. I don't understand why that's the case. I'm sure it has something to do with some code somewhere. All right, so now I got our policy. So now we're going to go back to our group. I should like maybe I should have done this in a slightly different order, but that's okay. So here's here's our group. We're going to go back into our group in permissions. We're going to attach our policy that we just made, which hopefully we can look up sandbox. There we go. So we're going to attach that to our group. Good. It's attached. Um and now I'm inside the group and I can assign users to the group that way, or I could go to the user and assign groups to the user. So you can do it either way. Um, I'm going to start in the group because I think about a group of users. Um, so I'm in the group. Now we're going to add the users and hello, this guy, person. Um, all right. So now they're in there. Right? It's a lot. I haven't even gotten to the actual script that we're going to write. Um, cool. Okay. So we've got our user. We've got the permissions set up. We've got the S3 bucket. Should be able to write it. So now let me just make sure I'm doing this right. So what's going to happen now is we're going to go to PyCharm. This is still going to fail because we don't have our credentials. Like nothing in here is, is telling Bado really kind of what to do. Um, and give me one second and I'll show you 
um, uh, 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 uh. there you go. All right, yep, that's fine. So actually, I guess I could do this so you can see it. So inside that dot AWS um, is this credentials file. Um, and generally speaking, uh, AWS Bado 3 credentials. Oh, cool. Can you do first option to provide both of these past parameters and creating clients? Oh, look at this client S3. Wait, session. We, we might just do that. So here's normally what you would have is um, this kind of structure inside of the credentials file, like a default, which is just where it goes to. Um, you can also name um, credential sets. Uh, this is a good example. So default, and then you have a, a, a AWS access key ID key uh, or variable, and then AWS secret access key variable. Um, and then you'd have the large strings of numbers after, and letters after them. Um, mine's a little different. Uh, again, I've got this set up. So I, ha I still have the default but I've got this credential process and then it calls G GPG, which is uh, encryption program to decrypt all this other stuff. And like mine actually processes file. Again, this is so that I can actually have this file and you can see it and I'm not flashing you my credentials. Again, I have MFA. So even if you saw my credentials, I should be safe, but that's leaking information and we don't want to leak information. Um, so there's what you aren't going to be able to get to or there's what you can't see. So how do we want to see the problem is, oh, okay. So actually what I can do is demo CLI. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in here. Okay, so Oh, if I was better at code, there's ways there's ways to like call this stuff out and have a script process it, which at some point I'll do, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so we, you saw the access key earlier, and then the secret key, and I think the access key is still sitting in BB Edit, right? So here's the access key. And then the secret key is a key I'm not going to show you, because right now you could actually do something with that S3 bucket, because that account currently has permissions to do read write from that S3 bucket. Now, all you could do is look at it, put stuff in it, take stuff out of it, and delete stuff that was already in it. Um, but I don't want you doing any of that, and I don't want you seeing the credentials, right? Um, so I'm gonna just hide all this, but we're gonna remember that demo underscore CLI is the um, profile, uh, is, is what you call the things in the brackets, and we'll get to that in just a second. Um, that we're going to use. So bear with me one second. I'm going to flip over and close this so you can't see it. I'm going to put the secret code in there from over here. Maybe. Nope. 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 My password manager is so secure, I can't get into it half the time. Um, Greenfield demo CLI, secret key. You can't see this. That's going to go there. Got it. Okay. And come back to a screen. There you go. So that's the access key. I don't care if you see that because you already saw it. I would care in general, like I wouldn't want to show you that on the other stuff. Again, leaking information, you get it. Um, so now, 
still not going to work because this, so when Bado 3 is run, it's from the AWS command line tools, um, or it's part of that. And it's basically looking at that default profile, which is a profile, and actually my profile set up dynamically so I can actually point it to different places. Like at some point I'll walk you through how I have all that stuff set up um, because I've got it set up so that I can, uh, so that I can easily switch um, between my uh, my personal account, my work account, or in fact this um, this test account, and there's a fourth one. I don't know what the fourth one is. Who knows? Um, at some point, I'll, I'll rebuild that as as an exercise just to show you how I did it. And actually, I want to write it up as a blog post because I think it's a useful thing. Um, and but so right now, this this points this calls that default profile, and that default profile is currently. I don't actually know if it's pointed to my work or to my personal. It's pointed to not the one that we're trying to mess with. Um, the Let's say it was pointed to my personal, and let's say I had an S3 bucket under my personal account that was Alan's cool bucket of awesomeness, right? Because this is calling my personal account, we're going to assume that's what it's calling right now, if we change this bucket name to, to Alan's personal bucket of awesomeness, and we put a key in there that's actually one of the files, it would get it. Like it's it's definitely it's shooting across for Amazon right now and saying, hey, here's a set of valid credentials because I have a set of valid credentials in there. Actually, the MFA token might have expired. We'll talk about all that stuff later. Um, for all intents and purposes, it's it's calling to Amazon. It's just not able to get to that S3, to this S3 bucket, the AWS PG sandbox. So once we switch the credentials to be able to hit this, it should work. Um, and so Bado 3 session, dev session, session client S3. So here's the thing that I don't know is, So we've got that profile, we just saw it. But I, but this is different. So we're going to S3 client. Oh, maybe that was it, it's client versus resource. Uh, that's probably it. Uh, AWS S3, Bado 3, Resource profile. Just throw all the words that we want to have there. That's an add configuration. It's the same doc we're on. It's an old doc. How did you use it from used by three to connect? Let's see what this one is. Hey, I got more points. Yay, cool. Um, session profile dev. Oh, option C, change the profile to the vault session environment of the variables. Okay. Create a new session. Okay. See, this one doesn't look like it would... Well, I don't know. Let's try this one. But see, we're not calling dev at any point. No, this... Okay, this should work. So this is assigning to a variable, but we're not... I don't have anything that's messing with that variable. Um... This, however, looks like it might work. Excuse me. So if we do here, is that what we called it? Cross your fingers, folks. There you go. All right. So after 45 minutes or an hour, however long it's been, we are reading a file. Um, the so basically what that's doing whoops hang on ah oh, come here sorry i was just making sure everything was still working you come here there we go um so now i'm using so inside that that credentials file there was a default profile and then we created the um demo cli file profile 
and then we assign that the access key and the secret key. So now that those are working, or now that all those things are in, when Bado3 calls, Bado3 automatically looks at that credentials file. It looks a few other places, but that's one of them. Um, and that's where generally we store stuff. So it looks in there and then it says, oh, okay, let me see if I can find a demo CLI. I've got that. Suck in those credentials and then go to town. So we grab the SC resource. We, uh, we determine which sandbox or what uh, bucket we want, which uh, file, which key we're looking for, create an object based off those, then we go through and read it, and then we print it out. So that's this. So if you looked at, um, if we look at this file, here, let's just do this one. Do, 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 do. Sandbox. I don't think it's a good open, is it? It's gonna download. Pop a window blocked. Uh, there it goes. So there you go. We just pulled down all that data. So that's working the way we expected. They can make better code. Type hints are not solved. Go away. I don't want that. Um, cool. Okay, so now. So this, this is without MFA. This is only using the secret key and the access key. So, and, and lots of stuff does that programmatically. Um, if, you've got, if you've got a system set up that, um, that, you, that, that that's not, there's not really a person involved in it, it's actually just a system, this is what you would do. You would really clearly or really tightly guard those secret and access keys. Um, you would put them on the system and then people wouldn't interact with it. Um, and so that's how you make things talk. Um, the MFA stuff, you, you can't really assign onto like another server that's talking to it because the MFA credentials can only last 36 hours at the max. And that would mean every 36 hours, somebody would have to go through and do a little dance and put in new credentials to make stuff work. And you just don't run servers that way. So this, what we have set up here is a programmatic way to do stuff. The thing that I'm solving for is I need to use credentials that individual people are going to have and have access to, so they're going to have it, so they could drop it and leak it. And I need that. I need to make sure that that is protected by MFA. So if they accidentally copy and paste out of their uh, password manager and send it to somebody or show it on screen or something, then we're still protected um, because the MFA is 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 that backup. So if we go in here now. And we go to our IAM, we go to our users. Right, so we're in the we're in the group AWS sandbox. Oh, so here's, and I'll, I'll show you this too real quick. So if I take if I take this, so remember, this group has the policy in it that allows read write access to that sandbox, uh, S3 sandbox, uh, AWS PG sandbox. Um, if I get rid of this policy, take it off, and we go back to PyCharm, and we run it, boom, access denied. So I've still got the same credentials, it's just that the group, so the, the account, the user account is under that group, but that group no longer has access to that bucket. In fact, this the group doesn't have access to anything, so this account, the, the user account doesn't have access to anything. Um, so we're gonna put that back, and that was this one. I'm not happy with the naming convention. I need, so that's the other trick, because I don't spend enough time in this stuff, so I don't have a really good naming convention stuff. Um, our team has done a good job with their stuff, but it, I don't have it in my head, and they have, they manage giant amounts of stuff, so they have really uh, intricate naming conventions. I'm trying to look for a naming convention for like somebody like me who's just doing solo stuff here. It's like, I don't need what they're doing. Um, but anyways, so we're going to go back in, um, just see what we're doing, right? We're going to add, uh, we're going to add this policy back into that group, add permissions. All right. So, oh wait, did I do that wrong? I think I did that wrong. Groups. Oh, I took them out of the group. Hang on a second. I don't think I removed the policy from the group, did I? 
Yeah, the policy was still in the group. I took the user out of the group. Same thing. I mean, they're different things, but it's the same effect. Like, you can think of it like a chain where there, there's a, it, it comes down to a user and it comes down to a policy. And so the, the user can directly attach to the policy or the user can attach to a group, which then attaches to the policy. But if, if the user doesn't have access to a policy or to the thing that's, that the policy provides, the policy lets you do stuff, then that user can't do those things. So I could, I could assign the policy directly or I could assign it to the, to the group and then assign the user to the group, which is what we're gonna do. Um, but as soon as I take one of those two things away, so I took, we had a group with a policy and then the user was in the group. I thought what I did was took the policy off the group. That's not what I did. I took the user out of the group, but the effect is the same. The user and the policy no longer have a connection through the group. I should draw diagrams. Um, I may see if I can hook up an iPad and do that. Uh, groups. So here's our group. Let me make sure the policy is still here. Yeah, so the policy is still in there. And now we can actually go to users. And again, I like the idea of groups and you add users into the group. So there's that. We're gonna add this little cat. And now, there we go, we're back in the business. Cool, all right, next step. Have a drink. Next step is we're going to turn MFA on for the user, multi-factor authentication. Um, we had it on earlier, we took it off because uh, I, I wanted to make sure like this, knowing that this is working helps a lot. Like we're going we're gonna to do some complicated stuff for the MFA stuff. And I might've had all that working wrong, but I might've had a permission error like somewhere that was actually what was stopping everything from working. So I could have been messing with my code a whole bunch when it was something in that screen that we were just looking at that was actually wrong. So I have that screen working now, the permissions and the groups and the policies. So that's set up. I know that's working because I can make this connection. So now it's time to get a little more complicated. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just turn MFA on. And what we'll see when we turn MFA on is this is gonna break again. So security credentials, no MFA assigned, we're gonna manage it. We're gonna make one. I'm gonna back off the screen again because I gotta create a new one. Bear with me. I'll be right back. I mean, I'm gonna be right here. The screen will be right back, excuse me. You can't see it. I can see it. I lost what I was doing. Where's my MFA thing? Uh... Oh, silly. Code scanned. All right, now I can bring this back. Too many mice. And again, it's fine that you see this. Like, um, these codes change every 30 seconds, and these are actually just verification codes that get in here. So you can't actually do anything with these two codes. Um, it would, it's the next code that is the first one that would actually be available to, um, uh, to authenticate. Authorize, authenticate. I can never remember which, there's that security stuff, man. It's just, those words do not fit in my head yet. I'm working on it. Sign MFA. We good to go? Hooray. MFA is now signed. Oh, the other thing I should have actually done is go to my groups, go to my force MFA, and add users to group. 
if I had done this earlier, this also would have stopped the thing from working. I'm not gonna go back and do it and do the MFA again. Um, but this just makes sure that the MFA has to be on. Um, if I try, if I tried to turn it off, the access to the account wouldn't work. Um, so like if I, if I went back into this user and we cleared, if we cleared this, if we turn that off again uh, by removing it, even though that username or the, the access key and secret key was working, it would stop working because there's a there's now a policy involved in here that says MFA has to be enabled on the account, otherwise don't let anything work. Um, and the way that Amazon system works is, I think they call it a deny allow. So the denies are more powerful than the allows. So when it says, so we have one policy that says allow access to this S3 bucket, and we have another policy that says deny access if no MFA is in there. Deny allow. So the so the MFA deny overrides any of the allow. So even you could say you could give that admin access, but you could put on an MFA and say if if MF in, in fact we do this, you have admin access, but if you don't have MFA enabled on your account, you can't actually do anything. Like it completely overrides and and uh, disallows and denies everything. Um, it's a really, like I really like the security model. It takes, took me a minute to kind of get my head around it. Um, but so if I had just attached that group to this user, uh, our PyCharm would have stopped again um, or would have gotten access denied even though nothing had changed on this side. Um, so, and, but now it's gonna break again because we need to have the MFA gone. All right. <sighs> okay, um, now I gotta figure out how to do this. Uh, okay. Um, so what we need to do, uh, AWS CLI MFA. Okay, so we need a few things. Um, well, this is gonna be more complicated than I thought. Um, Cause basically what you do is you take your existing secret key and access key, you take the MFA, I, I forgot that you had to pass apparently the secret, the serial number for the device, which I hope we can get. Um, I look up how to do that. I th oh, is that maybe? That may be this. Hmm. We'll have to look at that. Um, I have too many windows open. Um, let me close this, let me close this, let me close that. Close that, close that, close that. Normally I want a bigger monitor and I can have more things open. Um, oops, don't need that one. Don't need that one. Don't need that one. Get session token session. Get session token. Serial number Aaron token from device. First year account. Resource. Serial number, ARN. Okay, yeah, so that's the ARN, right? So this is, that's this. This is an ARN number right here. Whoops, get the A. So there's that. Token, code from token.
Okay. Um, so here's the trick. It looks... I did this before, and I this might actually be this simple. I'm going to get out of that directory for a second. We're going to go here. So this is another thing you, generally speaking, wouldn't want to flash. Even though I guess it's just the name of the, the username. So this should puke. Access denied. Yeah. Um, here's the trick. If I do this right, which I've, it's pretty easy to do, because I, I just need to add this token. It's going to fail again. Invalid length parameter. Oh, it should be six. Is that six? There you go. Access denied. Um, yeah, so, okay, this is actually cool. Um, I'm going to turn off the screen for a second. And I'll show you why. Because what's going to happen is when I... So this is really all you have to do. So the MFA has... You can think of it as having two parts. There's the device ID, which is this this ARN number, um, which I think is Amazon resource number number. I don't know. Um, but this is the device name, the assigned MFA device. This ARN string. Um, which Amazon knows, and then my phone. And, and so when when we created the when we created that uh, MFA device, um, Amazon synced over to my phone, gave me something for my phone that gives it um, the every thirty second update. So inside Amazon's system, they asso associated that every thirty second six digit update with this ARN number. I actually don't know that on my phone, but I can get it from here. But then the so the, the that's part one. Part two is the six digit number that updates every 30 seconds. So if I like if I so if I put it when I put in the proper six digit number here, it is then going to return a payload for me that's gonna have all this stuff. I'm not gonna show you that because that is access. Like it is a secret key and a session token and an expiration and an access key that are, that are live. Like those will work to get you into the mix. Um, I definitely, well, so you can specify extraction in seconds. Part of me wants to, to like show you with like a one second batch how to do it. Um, also, I would have to delete this MFA key just to do it. Um, well, I guess, I guess, does it come back as the same? It probably just gets named the same thing every time because it's just MFA and that's the name of the account. Um, and this is the account number. So y'all already know that. Um, that's not my favorite, but I... Again, this is a sandbox account. Like, I'm not super worried about it and you don't have the phone. Um, which is the whole point of MFA. Uh, but I'm trying to think <laughs> how many viewers are on right now. Do I dare? No, I don't dare. Um, I considered it, but I'm not. Uh, so let me let me bounce off for a second. Ooh, actually, so what I can do, what I can do is I can do this. Um, so let me go here for a second. Uh, let me pull up this dia this information again. Uh, seconds optional options session gets taken. Oh, the value can range from 900 seconds. Oh, okay, so never mind. I, was, I thought I could do it for like one second. 
and I was going to take it off screen and do it so you could see the payload, but the lowest you could do is 15 minutes, so I'm not going to mess with that. Um, yeah, so you can go up to 36 hours on... Uh, yeah, so you can specify the duration in seconds using duration seconds command for the get token command, where the value is 900 seconds, which is 15 minutes, or 129,600 seconds, which is 36 hours. That's for general accounts. For the root account, you can only go to a max of an hour. When I do this stuff, I, ma I max it out to the 36, just so I don't have to hit the MFA as often. Um, but what we're gonna do, so I'm just gonna run this for a second and I'm gonna highlight, I'm gonna delete stuff and then show you the payload. Is that cool? I just want to make sure this is cool. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and you'll see session token. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, I need to have, I've got a thing that I can use hotkeys for. I need to set that up. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to find our token, which of course is going to inspire if I was like, oh, wow, zero, 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 500. I've never seen one with all that many zeros. And again, I'm fine telling you that because it changed and it's already done. Hmm. And I'm getting access denied. Uh, Okay. What am I doing wrong? Uh, okay, so I'm going to hide again. Oh, okay, get the error of the device. So again, I'm gonna go M console. Demo one, yeah. So what we just did, wait, is this, nope, delete user, don't wanna do that. So sometimes what I like to do, again, you can see that access key, that's fine. Uh, sometimes I assemble commands in text editors just to make it less likely that I goof somewhere. So that's the basics. All right, I'm gonna hide again, I'll be right back. Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. No, I'm just kidding. Um, hang on, it's gonna change. Cannot get session token with credentials. Uh, error occurred when calling session token. Get session token option. Cannot get session token with session credentials. Google the error message. Oh, I probably need to add, ah, ha, 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 I need to add the profile. It's still going off the default profile, right? So AWS is using that default profile. Got it, 
Got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. I hope that's expired. It has. Um, well, and also, you don't have my secret key. Oh, this is... Okay, it's even more secure. This is cool. Uh, so I, I'm still not going to... You couldn't have actually done anything with if you'd seen that session, if that you'd seen that MFA code, because you don't have the secret key and the access key configured underneath because you don't have the secret key. Um, but again, once I once I do this, that payload that comes back, that's live, like that's hot. Um, profile, demo, CLI, isn't that what we said? Yeah, right there. I'm trying to get an access. Oh, can you do that interactively? I may have just learned something. Nope. Okay. Um, all right. Be right back as we yet again go to yield MFA. Let's see if I can get it before it expires. Nope. Can't. Nope. Can't. Pause. Uh, weird. It's very close to what I was earlier. Hey, it worked. Okay. Um, so let me clear some of this stuff out. So basically what that did is when I ran it, it re returned a JSON blob that looks like this. Um, each one of these numbers went out to a zillion. So you can use these. So that Amazon, that .aws slash credentials file is where you normally put your, your access key and your secret key. So you use that access key and that secret key and then your MFA token ID and your MFA token, the actual six digit number, you send all that stuff up to Amazon and it sends you back this payload. You then use these keys to do all of your access. Um, and I, I goofed, I should have set, I should have put a um, expire time on it for 36 hours. I didn't, it, so it defaulted to whatever the default is. Oh, that's in Zulu time, so that's probably 15 minutes. Um, no? Who knows? Whatever it is. Um, so this is cool. So now what we need to do is figure out how to, how to run this command and get this back with just uh, just a piece of text. Um, so that wasn't clear at all. Uh, basically we need to, we need our we need our Python script to uh, accept um, well, so what, I, what I'm thinking we're going to do is we're going to make a text file, and in that text file, we're going to put the six-digit number. Um, and then you can run the Python script. The Python script will grab your credentials and then go out and make the, the MFA credentials and then be able to actually access um, all the stuff. Oh, and yeah, so when you, when you create the MFA stuff, the one thing that it can do, that your account can do, is actually go get MFA credentials. So that's, where you, that's what we're doing, right? We've got the secret key and the access key with the MFA, 
you then go get the second set of credentials and then you can go do stuff for real. Um, so, here's the trick. Um, how am I going to do this? Uh, so, because the other trick is, so I need to, I actually kind of need to do two things. Um, no, I don't. Do I? Sorry, I'm trying, one of, I'm trying to think through here is, yeah, so you would have the profile set up. Yeah, so we just need to have, okay. Um, all right, so how, we're in main, that's cool. Uh, shit. Um, Uh, what I'm trying to think through right now is how to do this because like I really kind of only got like you have to like I'm messing with the live system because um, I need I need it to talk back to me and I need it to give me the credentials. Um, well, so I guess what I could do is what I'm worried about is showing you the JSON basically that has all the credentials in it. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go, we're going to comment all this stuff out for a second. Hello world. Um, so how do you run Whoa. Oh, it's a YouTube video. Wow, I that's a new way to see videos pop up. That looks different to me. Uh, how do you call extra command? Stack overflow, hooray, stack overflow. I just can't remember what it is. Sub process from process run out. Oh, okay, so you pass flags to it. Sub process module over there, OS. More powerful facilities responding to processes and retrieving results using a module for or using us as a system. Oh, a system might be easier to use though. Uh, all right, well, we'll use try this because that's what it recommends. Is that gotta call that to you, right? Who knows. Um, all right, let's just do what they say right here and just, so step one, just make sure this works. Hey, there we go. Um, so now what I, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that, um, Did it? Crap. I just remake it. I could pull it up, but whatever. This will get in my head a little bit too. All right, so we did all this. Where did that go? There we go. So I guess you do See this is why I don't like this one as much. Let me just see what that does to start with. I'm assuming it should choke, but why is it yelling there? Invalid syntax. 
Oh, because it's one of these. That's why I was yelling. Okay, so it went to standard error. Um, get off. Get session token. Really want a comma there. Want a comma there. There. Eventually, I'll put all this stuff in variables. here and it's demo CLI. Well how do you collect it? Well yeah but what do you does it just pass back? Whoops, probably would help if I printed it. See, I don't think that's picking this up. File token code. Subprocess run. Oh, took an argument, expected one argument. Okay, there you go. So now, error code access denied. Okay, cool. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, again, I'm relying on the security of Amazon right here. Because what I'm about to do is a couple things. First thing I'm going to do is we're going to set this uh, U2 still going in the ears by the way and now we're just hitting that good part. Um, did we already put that in? We already put that in. Where was our Duration seconds. Here. Because I want to make that as small as possible, which is 900, which is 15 minutes. It's still a very long time. Um, ah, see? Crap. Because in order to do this, I gotta figure out how to do this without flashing the credentials. Um, this also goes an access denied. Okay, cool. So let me do this again. When you can't see it, just so I can see what the response comes back as. It's over there now. Uh, eight, six, seven, five. Okay, it just threw it straight to standard out, which is not what I need. I need it to be in a variable so that I can parse it and mess with it. That's frustrating. Um, uh, okay, let me make sure, how do we get that to go away? 
that work? That worked, okay. So now you can't see it again. So it did work, it got their credentials. So we're, that's step one. Um, but we're gonna try that OS method. <laughs> Cause I, well, so, ah, where am I going? Replacing older function with a subprocess module section on subprocess document and may have some helpful recipes. Let's see what that has. See, like I I don't just want it to go to standard error. Like, I mean it goes or standard. You should not use shell true. Create a list out of commands. You can also pass string instead. So how do we get it replacing, okay, becomes output. No, wait a minute, because I didn't print anything. Replacing shell pipeline. Because it just threw it, it just printed it out for me, even though I didn't hit print, or I didn't tell it to print. I don't think. Did I? No. All right, give me one more second. Let me, uh, I just want to run it without that. So I'll be right back. Yeah, it just throws it straight to standard output. Uh, how do we make it not do that? Um, the first way we do it is we try the other method and see what it does. Standard pipe, uh, this is not all. Uh, give me one second. Pi, whoops. Pi. Response, the process is run. Oh, okay. Hey, I had a note. <laughs> this is where my grammar comes in. To pull standout directly without access to standard error in a way that will just capture the output, use this. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Hey, see? Grimoire, developer notebook. So we want to get rid of all this. stays there, doesn't it? Nope, it does not. Okay, so now when I run it, I shouldn't, oh shit, there are the credentials, fuck. Sorry. See, that's, well, that's why I'm using this account. Um, Oh, 
That's a bummer. Um, groups, come here. I don't think anybody's actually watching this right now. But now that, that account can't do anything. Um, the only thing it could do is hit, hit that one bucket and that's it, but still. Ah, that's annoying. Um, oh well. That's why I'm on the safety account. Uh, where am I going? What am I doing? Um, what's the default time? Because I don't think you even set the time for that. seconds twelve hours okay so that credential is alive for twelve hours um, Eastern Rick the name profiles Question is, can I kill it? All users with current session created by assuming the role are denied access. Once they've worked. To immediately deny all permissions to any current user of role credentials. I don't think that's it. Let's see if there's anything out there I am. Again, I'm not I'm not super worried about this, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna re-enable access to that. Well, so I can just make another user account so I can even blood the other one away. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do that. Like whatever, I flash credentials. It's gone. It's gone. Um, they can't do anything, but still. Uh, okay, so we're gonna make a new user again. Um, Goodbye, demo one. We hardly knew ye. All right, take two. Programmatic access. I'm not gonna walk through this as much as I did last time. We're gonna let force MFA. Will it have the sandbox? No tags. For some of sandbox, everything looks good. Let's make it. Uh, we're gonna hide. Oh, wait, did I call it one again? All right. Uh, hide. I'm gonna do a couple things while I've got this. Uh... Crap. That's not it either. Oh my gosh. I really need to change the password to something I can type. CLI one. Yep, I call it the same thing. Uh, where am I going? I'm getting a little tired, folks. Not gonna lie, this has been kind of a long one. But I, like, 
um, it's something I'm working on for tomorrow. It doesn't have, like, I just want to, I'm getting ahead of the game, basically, is what it is. Um, and also, I thought it'd be a good thing to do. So, like, this is what, like, I would have I would have made way more progress on this. Like, I probably would have been done by, frankly, if I wasn't broadcasting. But, like, that's cool. I like this. This is fun stuff. Um, uh, so, the other thing I'm doing is putting in the, um, I'm updating that credentials file. I forgot how to use Vim. Oh, my God. Um, because we've updated the access key and the secret key. Is that really change? Uh, and we need those, right, we need those to be in the credentials file because that the um, MFA token stuff bounces off of that. So I'm just updating that as well. So that that's the new stuff. Uh, and then I'm actually gonna go ahead and while we're here, just do the MFA credential real quick. Just to get all this stuff out of the way, you've seen it all before. Uh, I really should have some music going, shouldn't I? Um, come here. Please stand by. Please hold. All right, scan the code. Close that. Uh, we can bring this back now. I think. Ah, I locked the computer. <laughs> Too many mices. You go to sleep. Okay, then we just put our MFA tokens. Now we wait. Backup drink. See, the bummer is, if I don't finish this tonight, I'm gonna to finish it, well, I guess I could cast it tomorrow. Yeah, I could still do that. Okay, account set back up. Let me make sure I know what's going on. I'm getting a little tired, so I wanna make sure I'm not gonna make silly mistakes, or more likely to make silly mistakes. Um, for example, I know what's about to happen, is you're gonna see the credentials again but they're the credentials for the dead account. Oh no, I fixed it, Never mind. Um, I was ready for that to happen, but I had already thought through it. So anyways, now what I wanna do is just run this and see what happens. So standard error is still thrown up. So this is still thrown a standard error, I think. But I thought my note said it was gonna puke. Oh, 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 okay. So this is... If you need, if you just need the output, use 
check output. Principal output is binary object, which is why I decoded UTF-8. Apparently, there's a recommended approach. For, this isn't the recommended approach, but it still works. Okay, so we're not going to do that. Um, yeah, so I think what this is doing is it's throwing standard. You can capture standard error. Result center. Standard error runs standard out. Yeah, so what this is doing is... Standard output is coming into this response variable. The standard error is still going to the console, uh, to the terminal. Um, and we do have an error. So what should happen, and again, I'm going to hide this for a minute because it should give us credentials here in a second. Actually, what should happen, and I'll tell you if this is the case, but what I expect to have happen is when I put in the... Um, the proper MFA token here. I think all the other stuff is set up. Oh, I did have profile 900 seconds in there. So it would have been 15 minutes. Okay, still. Um, when I put the MFA token in there and run it, I don't expect to see any output other than my hello world here because we shouldn't get an error message. Standard output, so, so standard error is this. Standard output should go into this response, so that's where the JSON object is, but I'm not printing it or doing anything with it. So we shouldn't see anything. I'm gonna close this just in case that's not the case, and I don't wanna flash the credentials and have to do that all over again. So um, be right back. Um, what I should do, I wonder if there's a way to make like a blurry screen so I can you can still see like kind of what's going on. I need to look over there. Um, in that same good part again. Like I like it when it hits when I'm not talking. Cool, it worked. Okay. So now let me think through this for a second um, before I do anything else. So I just wanna print this in a way that I can see it. Oh, and a fake token changed. Ha, the token changed out from under me. Cool. Okay, so there's that, there's this. And then I already know what that looks like because that's over here, so that's what we're gonna get. All right. Okay, bringing this back to life. So, oh. If I had just done this one more time, it wouldn't have shown up. Well, and when the token's invalid again. Um, okay. That token is gonna expire in 15 minutes. I'm going to remove access from that account to do anything. This, by the way, is why it was a good idea for me to not to do like, A, to not work in a big account. Um, B, to just limit that, like that, we talked earlier about the, the access of least privilege. So if somebody really quickly right now wrote some scripts and grabbed that token and was messing with it, they could get into that S3 sandbox. But that was be the only thing that they could get into because I was doing the least privileged thing. Um, and now they can't even get into that. Um, so you, I'm just gonna let this fly for now. Uh, it's, I, I'm okay with the security risk that this is doing. And the reason I'm okay with it is I trust the Amazon perspective of the fact that this user's permissions, the only thing that's in its permission group is to force MFA. There is no access to anything else. Secondarily, that I know that token's gonna to expire in 15 minutes. So later when we do stuff and turn it back on to you know pipe into stuff, 
to do some verification. Well, so when I'm ready to do some verification, I'll actually make another account. I'll kill this one and do it if it's within 15 minutes. So it's, it's well, I, uh, we'll see. So it's, it's 10.45. Um, so at 11 o'clock, it's really 11.01, but whatever. Um, if I haven't goofed and flashed credentials again, we could potentially run this. But like, I'm okay running this right now because I just need to make a little bit more progress on the next phase of it, which is gra grabbing those tokens and being able to use those tokens. So I'm going to get to the point where I know that I'm sucking them out and they're ready to be used, and then um, we'll set something up. And if, if the 15 minutes has expired and I haven't reflashed credentials, I'll turn it back on so that you all can't see it, and then we can turn the S3 access back on and run that way. Um, if it hasn't been 15 minutes or if I flash the credentials again, I'll just make another account because that was what we want to see is like this process work and, um, and work all the way up to the point of, of hitting the S3 bucket. Um, so that's where we're at. I'm secure right now. I trust the Amazon system. I, I understand what's going on here in terms of this user. Like I'm, I click on this user and I'm going to this user right here. It shows me their permissions. So attached from group. So you, you can attach permissions directly or you can attach permissions via group. But so the only permissions that this user has is this force MFA. So I'm confident that you can't do anything with this. Those credentials are actually out there right now. Like that's, that's, those are live, those are hot. You could do stuff other than the fact that you can't actually do anything with them. Um, so, cool. Uh, you may be able to screw with the MFA too. Actually, let's see what you can do. Um, so the things that it's allowed to do, you can list the virtual devices, which we kind of don't really need. Um, oh. Change password, get credit. Oh, yeah, I got to kill it. Because you could change the password, get user. But so you couldn't actually do anything. You could see the access key. You can't see the secret key. Um, resources for the username. Okay. That's just the name of it. Uh, allow list MFA devices again for MFA and for the user. Okay. You could make a new MFA device. Okay, so that's risky. Because um, you could you could make your own MFA device that would show, like I would see it because it would show up, I think. Enable, resync, yeah. Um, deactivate MFA device. So you could turn off the MFA. Um, by the way, I love Amazon's system here for using these JSONs as their policies and really good naming. Like, I don't have to look up the overview of what these things are. If I need to get into the details, yes. But for the overview, like deactivate an MFA device. I know what that does uh, because those are the three words that it does. Uh, just really good stuff. Um, you can make an SSH public key, which you would use for GitHub. Um, create virtual devices. Yeah, so you could make a new MFA device. Um, I don't know that you could have two of them though. Uh, Multi-factor auth preset. I don't know what that is. Oh, if yes. Yeah, so, so when I built this, basically it allows you to do some stuff without having the MFA. You know, I might actually kill this and just be like, you actually have to like have somebody set up the MFA for you. Um, Actually, you know what? Even better. Now this account, account can't do anything. Um, and so the force MFA was just enforcing by policy that you have to have this turned on. But that policy isn't required. That just makes make sure that you have to have this on. But once I have it on, it's on. So that MFA is in place. That like it's all that MFA is happening right now. Um, the permissions that you could have done all that, that other stuff, like made made a new device or done whatever, those are now gone. So 
you can access the account through those credentials that we have, but now you literally can't do anything. Like there's no permission set to the user. Again, this goes with Amazon's least privilege. Like they start at the very least, which is zero privilege. Um, so cool. So, all right, so we're gonna, I'm okay with this. I'm okay with where with where we're at with this. Um, and that took five minutes to talk about. So in another five or 10, we'll be clear of those credentials. Um, also, I don't actually know if anyone's watching. Um, actually, we're gonna take a short break, ladies and gentlemen, and see if there's any viewers active. Viewers, if you're in the chat, or if you're active. Man, I need different mice, or different whatever. Uh, I see zero viewers. <laughs> I don't know that there have been viewers this whole time. That's okay. Um, cool. So, come back here. Um, I forgot what I was doing. Okay, now I'm not worried about flashing those credentials again, really. Except I am, but I'm not, because what should happen... So, I can show you this code now, because I know that you don't have the secret key, because that's sitting inside the um, credentials file. But what I can show you is, when we do this, we get to this hello world. Our JSON object is sitting now in this response, um, or it's a JSON string, I guess. Uh, so now what we should be able to do, import JSON. Uh, and then, Uh, I'm just looking at my JSON notes. That's for reading a file. Reading from a string would be load us. So, All right. So that's going to be in a string, which gets us here. So this should be a JSON object now. And again, I should be able to run this without showing anything. Oh, access denied, right, because this, this changes every 30 seconds. This is going to be a dance. Um, hello world, okay, so now... And uh, in, in BB edit, this is a copy of it, so credentials. Is this how this works? It's gonna expire. Yep, expire. Go. Ah! Uh, there is the number that we're looking for. Not the one we're actually gonna use but we are now making a call with our specific profile into uh, so we're using our specific profile which has our access key and our secret key which we're going to give our users um, with our assigned MFA device 
with our MFA token code, with the, the, the six digit number. So we, we've got the secret key, which we've got to give them, so that's fine. Um, but if they, if they lose it or if they flash it, they still have to have this MFA code. So this MFA code happens, we fire that to Amazon, they give us back a JSON object, that JSON object has the, you know, these credentials that we need, and we now have access to those credentials here. Cool. Because now what we can do is apply those credentials again into, basically we can update, so Bado, Bado 3 to start with is using, um, the credentials file, but that doesn't get us into S3 right now because of MFA. But but we're making an external command call to get a new set of credentials that we can then push into Bado 3 so that Bado 3 can actually make its call back into S3. Um, this was a lot of work to get here. Like, look at this. <laughs> so whatever hours in and what we've created well, so far what we've really done is this um now again it would have gone a lot like i was doing a lot of explaining about how the stuff works and all that jazz but like uh and it would have it would have gone faster if i wasn't doing this but uh i'm just i'm amused so now what we need to do lot of three set credentials We've been to this page before. Yeah, so here's here's the way that Bado3 can get set up. Um, and so right now, we're using credentials. We could back up do environmental variables. We could back up do session object or with client. Um, and so we're going to figure out how to do client. Um, or session. But how does that actually make things work is the question. Like, how do you then call with client? Well, uh, we'll start here. Um, so this this is what we want. First option is right. We're creating clients. Oh, three client S3. Okay. We're creating a session object. See. This is that thing I was talking about where we're not doing either one of those, where our stuff went. We made a resource. So we'll have to bounce around here a little bit and figure out what the, how to redo this stuff. Um, but the big trick is, oops, see, they use different hotkeys and I'm not cool with that. Um, Whoops. I'm getting tired, folks. Yeah, by the way, the other thing I'm going to need to add in here is, so we have that expiration. Once we're going to save these credentials, once we save them, we will want to then um, look at them to see if they're out of date. Why does this keep popping up? Stop popping up. If I make you go away, I don't want to necessarily do that. I just want you to stop keeping coming up. Um, so... Again, this, this is just the first step, which is getting this to work. Um, if I sit down here, I'm kind of weird, right? Um, um, so we did just straight access without MFA. We got that working. Next step is get an MFA, just basic MFA working, and then we'll work on the storage of MFA so that you don't have to refresh the credentials every 30 seconds um, or every time you want to run the, run the script. Um, but that's next up. Uh, so then we're going to get our credentials. And then what we're going to do is come back here. 
And we're going to make this, but with this, oops, keep that comma. Oh, wait a minute. It's going to need... Session token? Is that the same thing? Session token. Oh, cool. Okay. Secret access key. Secret access key. Session token. Session token. Access key ID. Access key ID. Okay, so we made a client that should connect. Auto three client s three list, whatever. I don't know about you, but I usually just open the first three links. Um, client, client, auto client, create object. Oh, delete bucket. Where are we in? Oh, s three client. That's what we want. It's doing it again. Auto client S3. Oh, okay. So that's bottom three client. Okay, so we're here. So we're going to use these. S3 object. S3 object get. Oh, that's hitting the resource again. Is that? Listing existing buckets, S3. Let's see if we print that and see what happens. Um, this is going to be client. Okay, so we're just making the client and then we're calling it with list buckets. I don't, it's not going to have the list buckets permission to start with. We know this. All right, our time has expired, so those credentials are no longer valid. You can't see them, you can't use them. And I'm not going to flash them here. What's this going to do? It should not work. Access denied. Good. Because he doesn't have S3 access to do that. So now I'm just going to give him, give it, um, so for this user here, I'm just going to open the world for a second. Again, I understand what I'm doing. There's only three S3 buckets in here. There's nothing that anybody can do anything with. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I don't even need those other ones. Um, I'm just, this doesn't matter. Um, I'm just further limiting exposure. Not that these are exposed, but like, um, It's just clean up, and I really like the idea of there's only one thing in here. Yeah, there's a bunch of junk in there, but I know what it was. 
Um, I looked at it before I started all this, and it's it's good to go. Uh, and the only thing in here is these two files. So now what I'm going to do, and again, this is another reason I like having this, you know, test account is I'm actually going to give the screen field user. Um, I'm going to apply these directly to the user instead of going to the group just because I want to do this temporarily. So add users to group is not what I want. I'm going to attach existing policies directly. And what I'm going to do is just give full S3 access. So now this user can create buckets, delete buckets, list buckets, put stuff in buckets, turn stuff off of buckets, like anything with S3. There's only the one bucket in there. But I'm not worried about it. Um, also, I'm based off all my understanding of everything that's happening, those credentials no longer work. So the, the fact that I flashed them doesn't matter and you still can't get them. You can't get the new ones and you're not seeing the new ones because the way that I'm doing it now, it stays in, it's in memory and it's only being passed in, uh, it never flashes on the screen. Um, I just want to walk you through where, where my head's at on all that stuff. So now, if we do this, I am hopeful that we'll get a list of our buckets. There we go. And we're in, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I don't know how to scroll. There we go. So this is their, like, it kind of doesn't matter what's here. Um, but this is our response and here, here's our bucket and here's our bucket name and creation date or whatever. So this is the response from listing buckets, uh, wherever that went, that's the response from this. Okay. So we now know that what we're doing is we're using our stored access key and secret key. We're applying our MFA token and MFA token, whatever, um, and device ID. We're sending those to Amazon because that's, we can't do anything with those other than send to Amazon. And Amazon delivers us back a set of credentials. We then apply those credentials to this S3 client or to this Botto client. That client then is going and talking to S3 and getting information back. So we know that that pipeline is working now. Um, and so now it's just a matter of like uh, the, so the first way I was doing it, I was grabbing this data from this object and doing it that way. Now I just have to figure out how to do it from the client, like from this client interface um, instead of from this resource interface. Cause that, you know, the first time we did it, we created Bado resource S3 instead of Bado client S3. Oh, actually, how about this? Let's give something to try. Um, We're gonna experiment. See if you can tell what I'm about to do. So here is the things that changed. And this is just, so like we're making client S3 and they're passing all these credentials. So what happens? Let me comment that out. What happens? Oh, I that ah, it's a hockey. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. What happens if we try just putting all that junk right there? Didn't format it well at all. Good Lord. Uh, so I'm, I'm not doing this set session defaults to the demo client ID because I'm actually hoping that right here is where it passes in all the credential stuff for me. So with luck, cross your fingers, folks. Uh, uh, uh. 
Ah, damn! We just did it. So I can get rid of all this crap. That's cool. Appreciate it. You were very helpful. You were very helpful. Thank you. There we go. So we now have this S3 resource. And I think we could do the... So I'm sure we could probably do session. We could do client. So whichever way that you need to interact with the... Um, with the mess of it, uh, you can do that. Uh, you can hit it. So this this gives us now it is up to. Um, so like if I added Redshift credentials in here, I could talk to Redshift. If I added Postgres credentials there, I talked to Postgres. So I, EC2, I could talk to EC2. If I Lambda, I could talk to Lambda. You know, name your service. The the AWS. Bot03 command is now set up to to do the the talking. It's it is authorized, authenticated. I think authenticated means you are who you are, and authorized gives you permission to do stuff. Maybe it's both of those things. I can't remember. Talk to a security expert. They'll let you know. Um, still there. Uh, but this is really cool. So we've got this. We've got this going now. Um, the, the next step will be, so the trick right now is I need to, every time I refresh it, I've got to go hit this code. But with this profile duration, if I, if I hang on to those credentials somewhere and then reload them in here, um, then, I, then I can last a lot longer, basically. Um, and so, That'll be the next step is basically to really the, the trick would be, and this this actually this will be the way that I'll do it. I actually save off these credentials when I run this process. It'll just save it off to a file. Um, and then when you run the process again, it'll reload. Well, I so I need we need to uh, I'll have to talk with my security folks actually to figure out if we actually want to run. So this basically what we're going to do is we're going to be giving this stuff to end users um, and giving them their MFA, their secret key, their access key with their MFA tokens. Um, so the question becomes, are we okay? And we'll just need to have some conversation about it. Um, are we okay with the fact that if we want, if basically if we, it's it's security and convenience is the is the thresholds or is the um, seesaw. Uh, Spectrum, I don't know. I like Seesaw better. Uh, but so the the security and convenience. What did I say? I don't remember. Um, like the most convenient thing to do would just be to give them a secret key and an access key without MFA. Because the Alteryx software, you can just put that in and go. There's a security risk there that if those, if those pieces of data leak or those strings leak, Anybody can has program access to whatever that user has access to. Now, again, we limit what the users can do to the minimum stuff that they need to be able to do. Um, so if, for example, they need to talk to an S3 bucket, we only let them talk to the S3 bucket that they need to talk to. We don't let them get to other S3 buckets. But it would still be possible then if that, if that leaked for other people to get in there. And that's the reason we use MFA. Um, is because you have to punch a number in your, from your phone into the um, whatever process you're working on. So the question for us becomes, do we want to have people basically hit the, the, the six-digit code in every time, because we make a little interface, um, for people to actually push in the six-digit code every time they run a process, because um, they're, you know, they're doing Alteryx stuff. Um, go look up Alteryx, you can see it. Um, some of those processes take a while, some of them are fast. The question becomes how, how much do we want to have them like locked in the security? Because if we take these credentials and we store them on their computer for any amount of time, they're there. Now, they're already in memory, but it just slightly increases the risk if we put it into a file. Probably okay. Guess it's going to be okay. Um, and then basically people, my, my guess is where we'll end up is 
you'll have credentials that'll last for an hour. Um, we'll, we'll set this time out for an hour and then people the like will store them for an hour. So if you wait an hour, then you got to do them again. So if somebody gets that file within that hour, then they only have an hour to screw with us. Basically, uh, the, the likelihood of somebody getting in and having coming in, finding a file and actually messing with it in an hour is low, not impossible. And that's the trick. And that's where our conversation happens in terms of the security and the convenience. We have to figure out like, where do we draw that line? Um, and so that'll be kind of one of the next steps that we do. But we'll, we'll like, uh, my guess is we'll likely end up storing this data for at least a little while in a file um, that then will expire. Because again, we w with whatever we set this time out to, that's when it expires. So we could set it for 10 minutes, maybe. Um, and maybe that's yeah, 10 minutes about right, because they can bounce with it for a little while and then go back through. Yeah, it's not bad. I don't know, up for discussion. Um, and then the other thing is not actually storing it and having like basically every time you um, you interact with the with the system, you got to punch in the number again. That's way less convenient, but it is more secure because we're not storing the credentials. So we'll see. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching, folks. Uh, hope you liked it. We'll um, we made thirty seven lines of code in a couple hours, uh, and some of that is logging stuff. Um, but you know, that's how it goes sometimes. And like, I, we did a bunch of other stuff in terms of watching how the systems work, watching how to create users and all that other jazz. So uh, and I, I think that was, uh, it was valuable for me to go through that because it also helps remind me of where all these things are and how they all kind of connect up. Um, so hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had a good time. Uh, we'll see you, be kind, and we'll, uh, we'll do it again soon. Bye-bye.